Welcome to another episode of The Crypt Kicker. I'm Carlicula. I'll be your host this evening. And I wanted to ask you, because it's Valentine's Day, let's all celebrate together. Will you be mine? Time for this month's horror headlines, and we have a lot of them, and this is distracting. We have trailers for the new Child's Play movie and new Pet Cemetery movie that came out. Definitely some smart casting choices and interesting changes to the scripts being made. Stephen King tweets that the new Pet Cemetery movie is truly scary, but we're getting a totally different reaction on social media about Child's Play. Fans don't seem positive about it at all. They seem pretty hesitant to back a franchise reboot. Guess we'll have to wait and see if Chucky is your friend till the end. The film adaptation for Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark released several mini trailers during the Super Bowl. It looks like they're taking stories that scared kids and keeping them true almost exactly to what you were seeing in the pages of that book. And it looks horrifying. I haven't been able to stop thinking about that trailer for the adaptation of The Red Spot. Reading about spiders in your face is one thing, but seeing it, it's reminiscent of that cockroach vignette at the end of Creepshow. Ugh. Some other horror headlines, the Gremlins 3 script is finalized, the release date for Zombieland sequel has been announced, it's October 11th, 2019, and a new Candyman adaptation is set for release in 2020. It's being billed as a spiritual sequel that returns to the neighborhood where the legend began, the now gentrified section of Chicago where the housing projects once stood. And while maybe a lesser known among the horror icons, Candyman is easily one of the scarier ones. No word yet on if Tony Todd will be reprising his role, but fingers crossed. We're screening Invasion of the B-Girls today. Why? Because it's Valentine's Day, and we think this movie is the bee's knees. Okay, that was corny, but we do have the buzz on this movie and why it fits the Crypt Kicker criteria for bad cinema. So here's Exhibit A, or should I say, Exhibit B. Are you sure, Mr. Ferris? Be careful. Well, except maybe for one thing. Hey, go ahead. They left the TV set on. Do you remember what was playing? No, it was after it went off the air, I mean. I could hear it humming. Humming? You know, hmm. Yeah, yeah. you remember what time that was? Oh. About 10 p.m., I guess. I don't know. Anything else? Sheriff Department. No, that's, that's everything. Well, thank you very much for your cooperation, Mr. Ferris. We know how to get in touch with you. They have all that written yes. down. Well, I've got it. We'll be right over. Mm. Uh, oh. I don't know if it means anything, but check the local TV station. Right. What's the matter? They just found another body. I think a better title for this movie would have been Invasion of the Bad Actors. Or if you want to suspend your disbelief, Invasion of the Bad Police Officers. Why would he say, oh, I don't know if this means anything, but we found another dead body. Unbelievable. Now, because the first man killed worked on bacteriological warfare research for the government, they sent someone down to investigate his death. And if you don't believe he's an official, don't worry, he'll prove it. Oh, uh, I'm, uh, Neil Agar. State Department Security. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hi. Hi. Neil Agar, I'm expected. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Neil Agar, State Department Security. I'm here to investigate Professor Grabowski's death. Now, may I see the file, please? And that's all within the first 10 minutes of the movie. I'm not joking. And he, after doing no investigative work at all, he gets a big lead in the case. All right. You might as well know. We went to dinner at the Flamingo Bar and Grill. And by about 
10 o'clock, we were playing kneesies under the table and having dessert, like the good old days. And then we went to the motel, and then it happened. What happened? We bawled, and we bawled, and we bawled, till he dropped dead. Touché. Let's go to lunch. Meanwhile, there are other strange happenings going on around town. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is weird, right? It's not just that it's the 70s. And even the characters in the movie are getting annoyed with this guy's identifying himself. Thank you. Uh, I'm Neil Agar, State Department Security. Christ. And another gets stung. Mm, let's wait a few minutes. I'm uh, sure he'll be right back. They're starting to get suspicious, but the deaths are caused by one of the most natural causes known to man, sexual exhaustion. There have been two scientists, a policeman, a cannery worker, a barber, a gas station attendant, a real estate broker, and a, uh, a grade school teacher. As you can see there doesn't seem to be any occupational correlation involved here. However, there are three points of uniformity I would like to bring out and, and underline for you. One, all the victims have been men. Two, all the men have been residents of Peckham. And third, they've all died apparently and I'd like to stress the word, apparently, by overexhaustion in the act of sexual intercourse. <laughs> so they think it might be a new fatal kind of VD. In the interim, let me suggest a course of action, that a curfew, possibly sundown, be set up. Now, let me put it this way to civic, union, and religious leaders in this community. I must stress the importance of total, I repeat, total sexual abstinence. Hold this! Now just hold it right there. This is the stupidest damn thing I've heard of yet. Eight guys are dead from balling, and you don't even know what's caused it. Now I agree with Sam here that you guys over at Brantwood's done it. Right. One of your goddamn experiments backfired on you, probably. Well, let me tell you something. Me, for one, ain't gonna give up a little pleasure I get from screwing my old lady, or anybody else, for that matter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if we have to listen to some more crazy ideas, I'm leaving. Well, let's see how that turns out for him. Mr. Braddock? Yeah? I'm Gretchen Grabowski. I believe you knew my late husband. Mind if I walk with you? Buzz, buzz, mother fuzz! Really? They're dropping like flies, they go. No, dude, it's bees. Bee girls. Invasion of the... <sighs> but based on that comment, the investigator gets an idea to watch a bee movie. No, <laughs> not that one. Finally, the worker bees tear open the milky white pupa, allowing the queen to emerge. Here, the queen has been marked with a red spot. The survival of a hive depends upon a fertile queen. Many queens are developed until one can be made fertile. During her lifetime, the queen will lay up to 20 million eggs. After that educational moment, he meets the queen bee herself. Look, Mr. Ager. I'll answer anything you like. Just please be as brief as possible. I'm in the middle of an experiment. Dr. Harris, how many times does a queen bee mate? Only once. Just once? And only to reproduce. Once accomplished, she never mates again. Yes, thank you, Doctor.
As the movie nears its conclusion, we see how the bee ladies are recruiting for their hive. Calm down, it'll be all right. Take it easy, calm down. And if you're watching the whole movie at home, you'll find there's a great deal of nudity. In fact, they even try to make this scene sexy. And here comes the only actually scary part of the movie. No way, I am not joining the sorority. They go way too far with the initiations. For we know that if the earthly house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Inasmuch as it has pleased Almighty God. Using gamma radiation? Do you want Hulk B girls? Because that's how you get Hulk B girls. And ultimately, one gunshot brings down the entire operation. Gross. And in conclusion, don't be mine this Valentine's Day. If you still have questions... But I still don't understand what motivated them. Well, what Susan Harris didn't realize was that the radiation caused them to be sterile. So as a consequence, 
they were endlessly driven to repeat the mating cycle. Well, I guess there's some romance for the holiday after all, or wait. Louisa. When you think you're going to ball a woman that seems way out of your league. Why would she want to sleep with you? She's a bee. If you see someone wearing dark glasses in a professional setting, don't cheat on your wife. She's a bee. She's a bee. She's a bee. She's a bee, she's a bee. She'll give you cardiac thrombosis. She's a bee. If you try to make sense of this movie, you'll find it's impossible. There was never even an invasion of the bees. So if you want the crypt caker rating, look inside your heart and see. This movie's one type of horror. It's a bee. 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 There was literally no point to them killing anyone.